Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I actually wanted to go over a new interview that the showrunners of the new Jurassic World Netflix series, Camp Cretaceous, gave to the press. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here that I thought would be fun to go over, but the headline itself is actually what I found to be the most entertaining. It reads, Steven Spielberg insisted Netflix's Jurassic World cartoon pull no punches. Now, of course, look, before I even go into this, we all know that this show is made for kids. It's definitely still a Jurassic Park project. I mean, they sat on the idea to do a JP animated series for like 25 years, but I mean, it's also clearly made for the kids first and foremost. So if you're expecting blood and gore and guts and anything more mature or aggressive than what you'd seen in any of the live action movies, I honestly, I don't know why you would expect that, but yeah, well now it is rated PG, which is a step up from the normal TVY7, which I actually do think they talk about in this article. But anyways, it does give us quite a bit of cool new information about the show that we haven't really seen anywhere else, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. And the article starts with Netflix's Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous isn't just about six kids having fun with dinosaurs. There's terror, pain, suffering, even death. So there will be death in this show. The showrunners said they couldn't do a Jurassic World series any other way, even if it's supposed to be for kids. After all, the command came from Steven Spielberg himself. When Steven gave the okay for the project, when he gave the final sign off, his marching orders were, don't do the kitty version. Showrunner Scott Kramer told io9, it needs to feel like it's Jurassic Park, it needs to feel like it's Jurassic World, and we went for it. And look, again, I wish I could talk more about this, but it hasn't been officially released to the public or anything. There was footage made for the original 1993 Jurassic Park animated series. It was 2D, and it did get dark, but if you look at the like the way the characters move and run and stuff like that, it was very like the, the real adventures of Johnny Quest from the 1990s. It even mixed a lot of CGI with the 2D animation and it was for kids. Now, it, it again, Steven Spielberg canceled that project way back when, but it wasn't a kiddie version. It was, I mean, I haven't seen Camp Cretaceous yet, but they looked tonally pretty similar. So moving on, io9 recently talked over the phone with showrunners Creamer and Aaron Hammersley about the inaugural season of Camp Cretaceous. It's the first Jurassic World animated series and the latest journey into the dino-fueled franchise, which continues with Jurassic World Dominion. Taking place during the events of the first Jurassic World, the first season centers around six young teens attending the inaugural weekend of Camp Cretaceous, a kid's summer camp on Isla Nublar. It doesn't take long for things to go awry, and the kids find themselves on the run from swarms of carnivorous dinosaurs with nary an adult to be found. They keep talking about first season, inaugural season, so I'm guessing if this is you know, very successful, they're gonna continue doing seasons kind of similar to what they did with Clone Wars. And if they're if they're gonna keep these kids as major characters, 2015 was five years ago. And if they were like, let's say they were 15 in 2015, then by the time we get to 2020 or 2021, which is around Dominion, if they keep making sequels, they're gonna get older. And I would assume the idea is to, as the seasons continue, the characters would grow and evolve and, you know, get more mature. But that's just speculation on my behalf. Who knows what they're actually going to do. Now, as we continue, a quote reads, In all the films, it's the kids are the side characters who need to be rescued by Alan Grant, Owen Grady, or an adult, Creamer said. So the whole idea is, Let's put kids in the center of the story. Let's cut off adult help. Let's make them have no one to count on but each other. And really, that's just the entire impetus for this story. It's let's empower the kids and see what happens. And again, I, I kind of mentioned that in the last Camp Cretaceous video I did where I looked into how the last trailer seemed to really be following on the character development that Alan Grant went through being the kid's father in Jurassic Park. So it looks like they've taken the adult element out for the kids to really grow on their own and, you know, evolve over time. Creamer and Hammersley joined the project after it had already been greenlit, and once they were on board, the pair resolved to make a kid's show that didn't play it safe, something Spielberg wanted to. They yearned to make a kid's show that would give younger audiences the freedom to experience and understand danger, like the Jurassic movies do. The showrunners took inspiration from films where kids face actual peril, oftentimes without an adult gadget or superpower to help them out. Not so coincidentally, this ended up being a lot of classic Spielberg works, including E.T., 
Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I love that movie, The Goonies, and obviously the original Jurassic Park. I think that you couldn't really do a Jurassic story without having those elements of putting people in real danger, because otherwise, if you don't have that, it's not going to feel like a Jurassic Park or Jurassic World film. So to us, it was really just kind of keep in line with the world that they've already created, Hammersley said. Camp Cretaceous earns its place in the actual peril category, as well as its PG rating. There, see, they are talking about that. While Creamer and Hammersley insisted the series never display blood or gore on screen, there are still times where things get intense. Sometimes the teens even watch other people be eaten by dinosaurs. Wow, okay, so... So, all right, there will be people dying in this show, and I guess the kids are going to watch it happen. It may not be bloody, but it is violent, and that can be a lot to handle. I wonder how much they actually can push in an animated series before it becomes TV-14. How much blood can you display? Because I don't remember there being a lot of actual red blood in Clone Wars. There was, like, creature blood, but it, they did have people getting their heads cut off, but it was, like, obscured and behind places, so I mean, I think we're gonna see a similar, like a shadow of somebody getting ripped in half or something here. Hammersley said it was about letting young characters be in peril instead of always making things feel safe and trusting the audience to understand what all of that means. The world does have all of these elements to varying degrees and I think that we may not do kids a service by sheltering them from all of those things. And I think it actually opens up your world and allowing for more stories to be told if you can incorporate those themes into your stories. Yes, agreed 100%. We definitely try to make this something that a parent could enjoy too. Like Aaron said, I think if you have a kid who's watching this, especially watching it with their parents, it can also open up some really good discussions and really good communication between the two and maybe raises issues or questions that wouldn't normally be talked about. When asked whether there's an age range for kids to watch this show, Creamer said it depends on the child, and if any parents are uncertain, they can watch a few episodes first and see how they feel. That said, if a kid has already seen Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, they'll likely be fine with this one. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> if they've seen those ACU guys getting ripped in half and blood falling from the trees in Jurassic World, or the, like, Mr. Arnold's arm falling on Ellie, I, look, I haven't seen Camp Cretaceous, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay. <laughs> and there's actually a comment here that says, I get that Spielberg doesn't want to cheapen the experience, but my problem with the new Jurassic World is they are becoming cruel, extremely violent movies. Fallen Kingdom was shockingly the cruelest of all the movies, with Part 3 looking to follow suit, judging by the short teaser. Are there any replies to that? Katie McGrath's fate in the first Jurassic World was particularly unnecessary. I remember being hor hor horrified by the cruelty of it in the theater. Even Sam Neill wondered what the deal was, especially since the big villain death is handled in a nanosecond. Yeah, I, I can see if you're a parent, you might be looking at this thinking the Jurassic World movies are too violent, but my parents wouldn't allow me to see Lost World in theaters. We bought it the night it came out on VHS. I loved it. I, it did scare me, and the Lost World is definitely the most violent and bloody of all the Jurassic movies. But like, dude, I none of these movies are like people getting their skull ripped out. None of them, like even the book, I read the book when I was 11. The book is far more violent with like Dennis Nedry's intestines getting torn out, but it's also got the F word and other stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I agree with the showrunners. It looks like they are putting people in danger. People are gonna get eaten in this. It's an animated show, so they couldn't go for blood or gore, but that being said, if they actually mature as the seasons continue, I would be very interested in where they can take this thing and push it. All in all, I think this is a very interesting article to mull over. The comments are very strange. I always hear like parents complaining that Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World are super dark, but then you have people that were born like in the late 90s or early 2000s and they claim that Jurassic Park 3 was the last horror movie in the franchise, which I find hilarious. But nevertheless, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I've always called it adjacent horror. It's more thriller really than anything. But yeah, I, I rather enjoyed this article. It told us quite a lot about the new series, which is going to be out in about a week. But hey, what do all of you guys think about this? What are your thoughts about Camp Cretaceous? What are your thoughts about the future seasons that could come out if this thing is a hit? And what are you looking forward to the most in this show or maybe its future seasons? Honestly, I don't... Really, I don't know where it could go. Maybe season two could tie in with the Jurassic World live tour or something. Uh, yeah, guys, whatever your thoughts and opinions happen to be, look, I'd love to hear them. Let's talk about it in the comments down below.
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.